Check out Tim Woody Matter. Still an Aja Butter with his sweet pure water. But no be me go judge. I'm um, sorry about my hair. I wanted to look presentable for this, but my hair was wasting time and I wanted to hurry up and come and talk. So, hats. And um, if you see my eyes moving at any point during this, then yes, I'm reading script, but I wrote the script. These are all my words and just know that I'm reading because I want to make sure that I get it all out very clearly. I don't want to talk rubbish by mistake. I don't know what this episode is going to be. The Yellow Wall is supposed to be a light-hearted, funny show about pop culture and what's happening in the world. But what's happening is institutionalized racism, murder, police brutality, violence, rape, and governments everywhere not giving <laughs> So there's nothing light-hearted about the world right now. Um, Nigerians, I have a question for you. We've seen videos like the one of George Floyd being murdered multiple times before. Police in America not giving a damn about black lives is something that was now so commonplace that it's become a plot line in entertainment. Blood and Slim, The Hate You Give, even an episode of the comedy show Brooklyn Nine-Nine have all dealt with it because that's just how common it was becoming. Literally days before George Floyd's murder, a white woman whose name I'm not going to even bother promoting anymore um, tried to get a black man, Christian Cooper, arrested obviously hoping something bad would happen to him. And we all watched that video too. There was nothing new about what happened to George Floyd. And I don't know if it's the fact that everyone is on edge because of COVID-19 or the fact that people were just at home and had nothing but time to think and focus on this particular incident. I don't know what it was, but something about this video, something about what we saw happen to George Floyd made everyone realize that this thing that we're almost now so used to, that is now so common, it cannot be so common anymore. It just can't. And so Americans took to the streets and now there's protests, there's riots and looting all across the country. People are making a stand. And it's marvelous. I can't for a second begin to understand the people that are saying that, oh, this is the wrong way to protest or, oh, this is the wrong way to get what you want. Which one is wrong way? The law decided to make it normal to brutalize people of color. The law said it was okay for Trayvon Martin to be killed on his way home from the store. The same law said it was okay for Eric Garner to be suffocated in broad daylight. They said it was okay for 12-year-old Tamir Rice to be shot while minding his own business, for Philando Castle to be shot while cooperating with police in front of his four-year-old child. In March of this very year, this same law thought it was cool to break into Breonna Taylor's house in the middle of the night and shoot her dead. And then they knelt on George Floyd's neck because they suspected, not that they were sure, they suspected that he had a fake $20 bill, killed him, and then they said that was okay too. And you expect people to try and respect the same law. They cannot and they should not. Everyone who is out now protesting, marching, rioting, they are doing it because the law hates black people. And enough is actually enough. And it took the murder of George Floyd for them to realize that. And so, Nigerians, my question to you is, what on earth is it going to take for us to realize that there's something very wrong with our own country? A terrible thing happened to an American citizen, and they have all come together now to fight the injustice. A 12-year-old was kept and raped repeatedly by 11 grown-ass men for two months. Another girl was raped and killed, killed by having her head bashed in by a fire hydrant while she was reading in a church. Are you Nigerians on Twitter asking, oh, why did she go to the church in the night? Uh, where were the 12-year-old's parents? We are busy asking stupid questions like, oh, what were these girls wearing? What the f*** is wrong with you people? The rate of sexual abuse in Nigeria is one of the worst in the entire world. And no one seems to truly care. Sure, every now and then something will happen and we'll get all up in arms, we'll be tweeting, posting on Instagram, rape should stop now, oh my god, no, no, no. All your social media will be covered for all of five minutes before Nigerians move on to the next scandal. But it's not getting any better. Almost every girl I know has been a victim of abuse in some form or another, myself included, and people refuse to care. Men still make excuses and say they can't be expected to control themselves. Women, usually ones who are brainwashed and desperate to appease the patriarchy. They are there also saying that they have to make sure they're at home at a responsible hour or and they're dressed okay. How do people not see that this is fucked up? I'm a human being. 
I should be able to confidently walk down the street, stark as naked if I want, and not be scared that somebody is going to jump out somewhere and rape me. But Nigerian citizens refuse to see women as human beings, and so rape, abuse, and violence against women continues to happen. And um, honestly, sometimes I actually don't think it's ever going to change. Sometimes I think I get really... I'm just like, what's the point? Why am I even doing this? Why are we doing this show? Why are people putting things on Instagram? Why are people even bothering to talk? Because Nigerians don't care. They're going to get over it in two minutes. The government is going to annoy us and we're all going to focus on that instead. Or, I don't know, something else will happen and just nobody will care. And <laughs> it's just the disregard of women is so ingrained in our society men are kings women are baby making chefs and that's that and sometimes it can all really feel very hopeless so in most countries the normal thing would be to turn to the law to help but <laughs> our law enforcement agency here is a f joke tina Ezekwe was a 16 year old girl she was part of a small group of people watching some policemen our so-called law enforcers drunkenly demand a bribe from a bus driver and a conductor the driver and the police got into a fight. The police started randomly shooting at the crowd and a bullet hit her. A girl died because the police here are anything but actual law enforcers. They are criminals in uniforms who demand bribes, harass citizens, and sometimes even kill us for no goddamn reason. Tina's story is not new here. In this coronavirus period alone, dozens of Nigerians have been killed by police all in the name of doing their jobs. For how many years now have we been shouting about police brutality in this same match, asking for the end of SARS? For how long have we demanded that the government do something, any, any thing to help us? As far as I know, not a single measure has been put in place to monitor police misconduct. No one. I may be wrong, Sha. They might have made a law or two. I'm, I'm not sure because I even tried to research it, but all I saw was a lot of English, a lot of back and forth from the government, but no clear answers. What I do know is that the police continue to terrorize us, both men and women, and get away with it. And again, like, I just, oh, I just feel really hopeless sometimes being Nigerian. I'm not even going to lie. Um, but we have to find, we have to find the hope and push through and try anyway. And it's hard to do in a country like this in a country where it's legal to marry a 13 year old where it's legal to beat your wife where it's legal to rape your wife it's hard to fight for the rights of women in a country where a woman is murdered in a church and the church's first response is to tweet a picture asking people to pray for their male millionaire leader who has nothing to do with anything but we have to keep trying for years we have asked women to dress decently to not go out at night to not sleep in a man's house for years, men, women, people of authority, this has been their simple solution. And yet, a woman dressed decently, literally in a church, was still raped. Kids at home are violated by their uncles, their cousins, their own fathers. What we've been doing isn't working. So nothing is actually going to change until people committing these crimes are held accountable. And since our leaders don't give a f it's up to us to make it happen. We have to start by talking to our boys, to our men, educating them, teaching them to leave women the f alone teaching them that we are not objects we are not for their pleasure we are humans and we are equal to them we should raise our boys to believe this like from when they are tiny and we also have to remind ourselves we women to demand respect you don't have to sleep with a man just because you are in his house you don't have to sleep with a man just because um he's giving you money you don't have to sleep with a man just because he's your husband you literally only sleep with people when you want to and as long as you don't want to you have the right to say no anyone who doesn't respect that and goes ahead to sleep with you anyway is indeed a rapist no matter who they are to you the more women are reminded of this the more they are told that they have this power that they can actually say no we can avoid men coming with their foolish excuse of oh i didn't know oh it was a gray area also by the way men sorry crying Pushing you away or saying I am in pain are very obvious forms of saying no. So stop with that bullshit excuse of hey, they didn't really say anything because they are not stupid. So stop playing dumb. We have to stop laughing with comedians when they joke about rape. We have to stop treating rape as this 
a funny thing or a thing that only happens to bad women or immoral women or women who don't hear word. We have to see rape as exactly what it is. A desperately evil thing that can happen to anyone of any age and is never ever the victim's fault. That point has to be made unapologetically clear now more than ever. If you own a business or a company of any kind, make sure there are anti-harassment rules in place. Talk to your staff, educate them, teach them to respect the women that work there. And don't let it be a brief, stupid email that HR sends out that people probably won't read. It should be a sit-down, open discussion between all, especially so the women who work for you can voice anything that makes them uncomfortable. For those of you in a position of privilege, with parents, uncles, aunties, in positions of power in our government in Nigeria, with people who can do something, speak to them, ask them to help in any way they can, with awareness, with money, maybe even with the law itself. Instead of doing Instagram lives telling uh, women to manage their cheating spouses or organizing debates about whether women should submit to men or not, please use your voice for something that's actually important and use your power to help this cause. We also have to do what we can to lend our support to the victims. Don't ask stupid questions when people talk about rape. <laughs> Just listen to them. What they were wearing, why they were out, what they were doing outside. None of that matters after the situation. So don't ask anybody any stupid questions. Never doubt a victim, even if to you the story is smelly. Always believe them until you have solid, solid proper evidence not to. Let's also stop making what happened to victims a taboo or something to be ashamed of because that stops people from coming forward when something happens to them and pointing out the rapists in our society. Encourage victims to talk, but like continue to bash rapists and rape, but never, ever, ever bash the victims. And for those of you who can afford it, please, please, please support the organizations that are dedicated to helping sexual assault victims. Stand to End Rape Initiative, War FNG, The Consent Workshop, Mirabel Center, and so many more all across Nigeria. We'll post the links under this video on our social media. I'll post it on my page. Plus, you can DM Accelerate. You can DM me for any info, any questions. But please, if you can, just donate or offer them support of any kind. Sometimes all it takes is something as simple as you reposting something on, their, on your own page just to raise awareness. I've been shouting about feminism for years and... I'm sure to a lot of people, it's very irritating. But this is why feminists shout. Not because we want to take over from the men or because we don't want to cook your f***ing dinner. It's because when women are not seen as equals, when they're not seen as fellow humans, this is the kind of that happens. And enough is enough. That's the end of the episode. So please continue to repost and share everything you can about the situation in america because yes nigerians you are far away but you are black too so it does affect you and also continue to do what you can about our own situations right here at home my name is tamara and i'll be back soon with more from the yellow world yeah. 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 Yeah.